I spent a lot of time on this channel talking about how to use Facebook ads to promote your music and I get some pretty great results but a lot of you have been asking me what about Google ads, what about YouTube ads and what happens if Facebook restricts your ad account like it's been doing to what seems like almost everybody over the past month. Well. I decided to dive into Google Ads and try to get some great results. And in fact, I, I did a consultation call with some people at Google Ads and they gave me some tips on how to actually promote music on the Google Ads platform based on their expertise. So I also have some initial results for a pretty bad YouTube ads campaign, but I have some promising ones for a Google Ads campaign. So I'm gonna show you the results They're very early on and then I'll show you how I set it up so you can kind of try it along with me um, if you're willing to experiment and contribute to try to figure out how to best do this. So anyways, first I'll show you what are the promising results I have so far. So literally, I launched this today. So it's very early on. Now, um, just to get to the point, I have set things up as a conversion campaign, just like I would do on Facebook. And I had to make a custom website coded from scratch. Um, there might be ways to do this with like a toned in or hyped it, not so much hyped it because I don't think they have Google integration, um, but with toned in and a few other services. So I, I coded this thing from scratch. Um, <laughs> luckily I have some experience doing that. And I made this nice page that fires off Google ads conversions. Um, so if I go through here, we see we get 16 conversions on this ad. I'll go through the structure in a sec. And on this one, we have three and the cost per conversion is roughly 34 cents for both of them. And we also have the report on how many clicks. So we had 161 clicks in this one, 41 on that one. Um, and we also have an average cost per click, not really relevant because what we really care about is the conversions. Um, now, let's go to the structure of how these Google ad campaigns actually work. They're very similar to Facebook campaigns. We have a campaign, which is the change display conversions. Everything is broken up into ad groups, which is kind of the equivalent of Facebook's ad sets. And what I did is I targeted uh, three different groups of people. One is people who have an, an affinity towards EDM music. The next one is people who have an affinity towards pop music. That's kind of like on Facebook, you would do a detailed targeting, you know, and kind of EDM or pop. Um, and then last I did a placements where I'm targeting specific websites and blogs. Um, it doesn't seem to have any traction yet though. So then we can break down the cost per conversion for each of these. Um, Maybe my page refresh because I think these numbers are different, but you can see the cost per conversions, it's not as great as what I'm getting on Facebook, but this is my first try. So I think this is very uh, promising. So lastly, of course, inside of each ad group, you have ads and that's what I have and what I just showed you here. So the way that I created this campaign and let's just go to the all campaign section. We're gonna create a campaign and I'll kind of walk you through the process that I did. So we're going for website traffic, right? Now, when I talk to the people over at Google Ads, and they're very nice, by the way, um, they're super smart in terms of, like, I've heard bad things about the, the Facebook uh, ad experts, but the Google Ads people were very helpful. Um, and so they told me that the most promising result would probably be from display. Um, and you can see these show across the web, meaning websites generally. So when you go on a random website, you might see like a random like Google ad on the side. These are the kind of placements. I always thought you could only do images with this, but it turns out you can do videos too. And that's what I did. So if we click this display, we're going with a standard display campaign. Um, we'll just drop in the website. I'm just going to copy the link. Um, by the way, if you have an artist name, maybe you could do something similar. I bought Andrew on Spotify.com. So I'm using that to host all of my Links, I think I also bought Andrew on apple.com as well. Um, so we're gonna go with continue. Figured that'd be easier than having like andrew.com slash link, you know, andrewsouthworld.com slash link, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so now we're in location. So the locations that I targeted, I didn't target the whole world. I kind of went in um, and actually I went to enter another location. I started adding just some common countries. I did like Canada, Japan, uh, and I, I did add some lower tier countries. So I did add Brazil, but that's fine. Lots of people listen to music in Brazil. And I did add uh, Mexico and a few others, but that's not the point of this video. I went for English only because my music's in English. Bidding, I went with conversions because that's what I care about. I'm going for automatically maximized conversions. You can, however, manually set the bid. I wouldn't recommend getting into that, at least not for what we're doing as music artists. Now the budget, you just define a daily ad spend. I think I went with 10 initially and now I'm doing a 15, just test it out, do whatever you want. And now we're defining the ad group. Remember, this is the essentially the Facebook's or Google's equivalent to Facebook's ad sets. So here we're defining our audience and our targeting and stuff like that. So I'll just keep it as ad group one. 
Um, and see, I have a bunch of things that I've done in the past. And the way to get to this is if you click browse, there's all these different ways to target people. Like you can go with life events, like if they're going to graduate from college or something, you can go with their detailed demographics, like marital status and income and stuff like that. Um, and then also retargeting and some other custom audience stuff, just, just like Facebook. But we're going to do with affinity for, for this group in particular. And if you go to media and entertainment, music lovers, then we're going to get a bunch of different genres. So basically what I did is just selected, um, well, I guess I'll go with pop for this one. Um, now you also have options, uh, to target people, for example, um, well, I guess first we can segregate or not segregate. Uh, we can restrict our demographic, um, demographic, uh, targeting. So I went with, I think I went with this. I don't remember, but then I left the rest the same cause I kind of don't care about that stuff. Now, instead of like grouping people and then like segregating them by tar affinity, you can also split them up by, um, uh, keywords, topics, or placements. And so this one, the first one I just go with affinity, but if you want, you can click this and you can like do the keyword stuff here. I haven't got into that yet, but that's another thing you can do. Now, targeting expansion is just like detail targeting expansion on Facebook. Um, this kind of lets Google go out and find people who are most likely to be similar to the people you're targeting. Um, and there's a scale for it too, which is really cool. <laughs> um, now, I don't know if it's because my window is a little bit small, but on the side here, you get some kind of estimate. So based on your, your daily budget and your targeting, um, every single week, we're going to get 570 to 3,000 clicks in between 3 and 30 uh, conversions. So, I mean, if you do the math on that, $770, 30 conversions, not very good. Um, but it seems like I'm getting better results than that so far. Now, keep in mind, I haven't filled this out entirely like I did with mine. I, like, I didn't put all the countries in, but... Um, that's how you kind of get an idea of your targeting. All right, so now if we continue going on, this is where we actually create our ad. Now, um, we put in our final URL, and then we start putting on some things. So images and logos, videos, headlines, descriptions. I'll show you a little bit about how that works, but the rest you can kind of just uh, repeat. So I uploaded some stuff recently. You can see I've tried Google Ads in the past to promote my sample packs, um, but here, I, these, are, these are the things I use. So, you know, I click uh, this doodad and I can say I want to use it as a logo. And then I can select that one ratio and then I can choose uh, this and I can use it as an image. Um, and I can also add a crop version, select two ratios. I use this picture from <laughs> Adam. This is my song Chains for um, Adamant's uh, old music video. I just used it because I, I didn't really have anything uh, to use for this song. And I just kind of made these two nice crops and I selected those. Um, and then we'll just click save. And then for video, similarly, you actually have to host them on YouTube, but you can just make them an unlisted video so that way no one sees them. Um, and then you see here, what I did is I had this cool little like blender animation I did. So I use that. And then this was like a, one of my normal Facebook ad things. So if I click it now over here, we can start previewing stuff. There's a bunch of rules for Google ads and what you can type into these boxes here. Um, look up on their, their targeting rules. You can't use like exclamation points or a bunch of periods or like anything that's very like flashy and stuff like that. They are very particular on that, but it'll tell you if you can't use it before you submit it, which is nice. But you know, this will be whatever you want. I think for headline, I did like Chains by Andrew Southworth and Adamant. I don't remember if that fit there. Maybe I said like, listen to Chains. And the long headline, I did like Chains by Adam's, uh, Andrew Southworth and Adamant. Descriptions, you know, like new future base pop hybrid and then not, and then you can keep adding these multiple options um and you know kind of little spins on that and they'll tell you like fill up these things to try to get better results um and we can preview this stuff here if we do key ad formats we can look at our video ads um, and it'll give us a little preview on different placements of how things will work now as you start populating more headlines it'll show you all the different uh, iterations uh, combos of of all these things. So once you publish that, you can go in and you'll see your singular ad group and a singular ad. What you can do at that point is start you know, doing this and doing uh, copy and then doing that again and doing paste and essentially duplicating it. And then you can go into the audiences um, and you can delete the audience and populate it with the new one for the ad set. Now what you can also do, and I'll show you with this one, uh, if I click this placements ad group, we go into the audiences, I don't actually have anything there because this one was defined by placements. So I went and I looked up a bunch of sites that people looking for new music might be on. 
Um, it hasn't taken off yet, but you know you can kind of experiment with this. You know, your EDM, official charts, EDM sauce, EDM tunes, Dancing Astronaut, a bunch of other music blog type sites. Um, and any site that uses Google Ads, you can include in this list. So it's something to think about because you know one thing if you if you do EDM it's going to be it's going to follow that person on whatever site they go so it, meaning if they're on like a uh, computer parts website that uses Google Ads if they like EDM you might show up on that website which is cool I don't really care as long as that person's interested in it but this is a different way of doing it because you might not know what that person's into but if they're hanging out a dancing astronaut they're probably a music fan you know <laughs> they're looking for new stuff um, so that's why I tried this now similarly you can also do keywords and you can add your keywords just like this um, and I'll just kind of open it up to show you. You literally just type in, you know, let's say, I, I think the song sounds kind of like Chain Smokers, so I might do Chain Smokers, the Chain Smokers um, sounds like Chain Smoke. You know, kind of try all these different things. Uh, these exact keywords, I don't know, I haven't tested it, but when you do it, it'll list them all out afterwards and tell you how many link clicks and conversions each keyword is giving you. So there's way more stuff to target than what's actually available in, um, in Facebook ads, and as you can see from the results so far, you know, 31 cents and 27 cents per conversion, it's pretty promising. Now, I'm gonna have to do this for, for days and weeks and stuff to kind of see the numbers come in, how consistent it is, how many people it can find, if it optimizes over time, and then checking on Spotify to make sure all the conversions are actually resulting in new listeners and real genuine people. The downside of this is you know, you're know you not running your ads on your social media account, so you're not generating like social media followers, but um, it's, it's different. You know, it's a different way of doing stuff. You're reaching new people you might have never reached because some people don't use Facebook and Instagram that much. Believe it or not, you know, two billion people do, but that's another five billion people that don't. So despite the Google ads people telling me that YouTube ads would be worse for my knee, they told me that general YouTube ads work better if you're either driving people to like a, a product or something, where you can target them, you know, for that product, or if you're driving them to a YouTube video. Uh, but I decided to try it anyways, <laughs> just to see what would happen. Um, so let's go into this YouTube or uh, this Neutron campaign. I was throwing my older song, Neutron, and the structure is pretty much the same. We're doing ad groups of EDM, pop and I'm targeting specific YouTube channels like um, I think I'm running this on the chain smokers YouTube channel and a few other things but I think my audience size was too small because it's not running on it now if we go to the actual ad so I can show you kind of what I was doing um, we'll go to a preview you can preview your ad on desktop I used a 33 second chunk from my uh, my song Neutron just because I had a video and I, I thought it might be a decent one also it'd be easier to track because the song's not doing nearly as, as well as chains so um, I could see an increase in streams if it was happening. Um, so let me close this. So now if we actually look at these ads, we can interpret some of the results. So, you know, you get views, you get average cost per view, you get total amount spent. Um, I, I had some ads I turned off. So basically these ads add up $23. Um, we get clicks and we get conversions. And then we can also look at things conversion costs. But we only get six clicks and we only get three conversions for 20 something dollars averaging out to um, about eight dollars a conversion which is a lot i mean the google ads people told me it would be it wouldn't work well for my needs but i wanted to prove it and also have something to show uh in a youtube video for people who were asking about youtube ads and and should they use it for this purpose you know remember i'm, I'm sending people to this is another custom coded site so i added youtube as an option to check out the full music video um, and it's still not really clicking and I think it's because you know, it makes sense like if you're watching a YouTube video and it's like music video pops up It's like check out the song. It's kind of like no dude. I'm watching a video like what the heck, you know, <laughs> like no It just doesn't it doesn't make as much sense Whereas if you're browsing the web and you see an ad like you're already kind of chilling might as well listen to some music, right? Um, so the YouTube ads I, I see what they mean You do get some cool metrics though, and maybe you can make this work better than I did um, like earned subscribers, earned likes, earned playlist additions. I got none of that. Um, I think if I go to the ad groups, it might be a little easier to see. Um, it did have earned subscribers. It's probably one. And then earned views, five. Earned likes, one. So you can also see how long they watched in the video. This is only a 33-second video. So, I mean, <laughs> essentially the 50, or what is it, five-second skip? So some people actually did watch further than the five-second skip. So... That's pretty neat, but either way, like it's, it, it clearly shows that display ads are the winner, and that's what I'm going to be pursuing going forward. Um, and hopefully, some of you can try this and head on to the Genera Studios forum. There's going to be a link in the description where you can tell me how it's going, and maybe together we can figure out how to make this actually a good alternative to Facebook ads. So 
Anyways, uh, if you want to check out some of my videos on Facebook ads, you can click this playlist right here. And I encourage you to head over to the Jenner Studios forum and, you know, just share some stuff and chat with some people. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.